Hey everyone, so I wanted to talk about something today because I find it interesting and um, yeah, it, I was listening to a Karen Calabrese interview. I'm not going to show the interview, but I'll show this picture of her. She's, she looks great, I think, like from what I can see, she looks great, but she did mention a couple things. Um, she was, she was talking about her past like issues, like health issues. And I really, really actually appreciate her honesty in this because how else can we learn if people keep hiding their health issues, right? If people say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, how are we going to learn? So in this interview, she said that she had developed at one point in her life, a goiter. And she worked with some of her natural um, raw foodists, I guess, practitioners or whatever, to help get rid of this goiter at one point. And um, she said something about enzymes, I thought, like she used enzymes or something like that. Um, and I found this interesting because on a raw food diet, I, I know some other practitioners like practitioners like raw food gurus or whatever like Don Bennett recommends taking iodine because your iodines you're not you don't have a source of iodine and if especially if you're not using iodized salt so um so Karen may not have been using iodized salt you know a lot of well myself included I don't use iodized salt but then I supplement with Dulce but that's another story so I was just looking into, you know, what this could have been due to. So I went back to Freely's blood test because I was really interested. And um, she doesn't seem to have thyroid hormone issues anyway. She doesn't, and she, obviously, like, I don't see a goiter. So <laughs> probably doesn't have thyroid issues. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. But potentially, if Freely does go out once in a while, I don't know how much, but depending on how much she might like, quote unquote, cheat or go out and eat like raw till four at restaurants, they might be using iodized salt at restaurants. She might be getting iodine in that way and potentially does freely, freely, <laughs> sorry, freely use uh, seaweed, a significant amount of seaweed. I'm not sure. Or maybe she's just not prone to thyroid issues the way Karen is, but um, these were all things that I thought of. However, one big thing is Freely and Karen are on different diets, even though they're both raw. Karen seems to be more on like a ketogenic raw diet um, because she, she was talking about sugar and how she thinks it ages you and obviously Freely eats a lot of sugar. So it's different diets. And I have heard in the past that keto can affect your thyroid. So potentially... It could be that, right? But then there are some, I guess, keto diets for thyroid um, that, you know, they're saying that <clears throat> there's research saying that like a keto diet can be helpful for Hashimoto's and the keto diet that's shown to be to work for Hashimoto's is um, about 65 grams of carbohydrate uh, 50 to 60% protein, 25 to 30% fats, and then excluding like legumes, bread, pasta, fruit, goitrogenic vegetables, rice, dairy. So some things Karen might be eating goitrogenic vegetables, but she's probably not eating any of the other stuff. Um, so potentially these could be reasons why Karen had that issue at one point. But another thing I want to point out too, that I think is important is that we are not apes and we're tr like these people try to eat, well, maybe not so much Karen, but Freely especially tries to eat these ape diets and apes um, do not have the same like thyroid issues as we do. It seems as though uh, chimpanzees and bonobos do have higher T4 and T3, uh, but their thyroid um, antibodies are rare and hypothyroidism is unrelated to thyroid autoimmunity. So it's not related to an autoimmune condition in apes anyway. So the reason why humans get 
thyroid issues and apes get thyroid issues are two different things. So I was thinking, do apes eat iodine? And I'm sorry, this article is a little hard to see because I don't want to subscribe, but it seems as though bonobos get their iodine from swampy plants and that bonobos um, tend to, you know, hang around aquatic areas and they're able to get iodine probably from these aquatic plants. So apes do get iodine. And so I think it makes sense for people and especially um, raw foodists who don't use iodized salt to be intaking more seaweed. So that's kind of my thoughts on the goiter. Like, I don't know, obviously, like there's no way I would ever know. But those are just some thoughts that I had about the goiter. And another thing that Karen said, and I again, I appreciate her st- being so honest about her health because she did mention that most of her teeth were um, not real, not her real teeth. And she's 75. So, I mean, my grandparents lost all their teeth by the time they were like in their 30s or 40s just because of poverty and stuff like that. Um, But, I mean, nowadays, if you have enough money and if you take good care of your teeth you should be able to keep your teeth she did say she didn't take adequate care of her teeth now maybe she was eating more of a sugary raw diet at the time and she switched I don't know um does Freely have issues with her teeth we don't know when looking at Freely's calcium on her um on her blood test she seems to have adequate calcium so um perhaps it's not a calcium issue perhaps Freely's teeth are fine I don't know, but that's another thing that Karen did mention, which I did really appreciate hearing about. And she did go through her diet and she also mentioned that it sounds like she's on like a constant calorie deficit, like a fairly large one. And she really doesn't eat very much. And she kind of just mentioned, you know, celery juice and then maybe like a raw flax cracker with cheese or maybe a big salad and low sugar so that's kind of what she mentioned was her diet um so just an interesting comparison of the two diets and outcomes of potentially you know raw food diets that don't have these nutrients in them perhaps raw foodists should be eating more seaweed and maybe for some um you know supplementing with a calcium i personally like to take a desiccated bone because all herbivores not maybe not all but herbivores omnivores and carnivores all eat bone they all eat bone so it it just makes sense to me to be eating some bone at least once in a while (laughs) but um some people might find it gross to eat bone she's definitely not eating these tacos this is just for the photo op (laughs) i think but anyway those are my thoughts on uh raw food deficiencies and comparing two different raw food diets.